Greetings, gentle viewers. This is the third Stuart Gordon H.P. Lovecraft adaptation, and it's a film of mysteries. Mysteries like, who the fuck thinks Castle Freak is a good title? The short story it was based on was called The Outsider for fuck's sake. And other mysteries like, how could the guy who made Reanimator look amazing for no budget also make location shooting in a real life castle look like shit? He has more of a budget here. Why does this look so bad? We open up with traditional Italian family values as an old woman has chained her son up in a dungeon, but still makes sure he eats good salami. You didn't properly compliment me on yesterday's bruschetta! <laughs> I'm pretending he's Jim Caviezel. Oh no, she's misunderstanding the basics of scourging. If anyone dies, it's the guy being hit. Well, I always wanted to know what dubstep would sound like if it was invented in the 18th century. So, the castle is inherited by the old woman's closest living relative. Except for Pumpkinhead. And you guessed it. That relative is... Jeffrey Combs. You know, when I got your letter, Mr. Giannetti, I thought it was a scam. Scam? Well, it's just hard to believe I've actually inherited a castle. Let alone a castle that appeared in two Transers movies. He's brought his wife and daughter. His wife is, of course, Barbara Crampton. Watching these films back to back, and it's like there's been reincarnation, and these two spent several incarnations slowly going from enemies to sympathetic to a couple that fucking hit each other. Their daughter's a teen and was blinded in a car crash that her dad caused. He'd been drinking heavily because of the stress of trying to both be a Jeffrey Combs character and totally normal. Poor bastard snapped like a Twix bar, shaped like Jeffrey Combs. Teddy, I think he's saying that you're the Duke. <laughs> yes. Your father is the legal heir of the title and the castle and all the possession it contains. I'm afraid the family lost their fortune during the war. So, there is no money. Wow, that painting looks like it's seen some shit. It's probably angry that someone suggested it wasn't worth anything. They decided they're going to sell the castle. Probably for the best, seeing as they inherited a Morlock. In a way, Combs tries to use Italy's intrinsic romanticness to his advantage. I miss you, Susie. I miss you so, so much. Stop it! For Christ's sake. It's been nine months. I know, I know. For fuck's sake, it's been nine months since I blinded our daughter and killed our son in a car wreck. Nine fucking months! That's like four and a half months for an eyeball! Or nine months a kid! I even tried to sexually assault you to say sorry! I am this close to winning till the Matrix comes out, taking a red pill and whining about it online. Because I'm a nice guy, damn it! If you don't start believing me, I'll make sure the next car wreck kills you instead! You see what happens when you try to make Jeffrey Combs normal? No! No! <laughs> you just make him even worse. I think he's been kicking himself that he forgot his reanimation fluid that night. Because his wife totally wouldn't have noticed if he just brought the kid back to life. Or maybe he's heard about the upheaval in nearby Raccoon City, and is expecting zombie dogs at any moment. He's sure he hears his son's ghost, for some reason, and follows him into the wine cellar where he discovers an even weirder mystery. Why are they keeping empty bottles of wine? Oh. Do you need ale? No, thank you. I just cut myself. He runs into the housekeeper who explains the whole sordid and soap opera tale of the family. The previous duchess married an American and had a kid. He then left her and went back to the States with her sister. The duchess went crazy and the kid supposedly died. But we, the audience, know that he ended up as her very own Caroline Purdy Gordon. Why are you telling me this? 
because I like to... to gossip. Jeffrey Combs inherited the castle through the American. You know, this whole mystery would work so much better if there was no prologue. As it is, we're 20 minutes in and the mystery they're desperately trying to set up has already been knocked down for the audience. Who is the castle freak? Really fucking obvious! So, Combs and his daughter start to do an inventory of the castle. Of course, this means not writing anything down, glancing over expensive looking stuff and getting so engrossed in a fucking photo album that you don't notice your blind daughter wandering off after a mysterious scratching sound. Who are you? Kitty? Where are you going? I don't know what's worse. Her dad's constant sociopathy and periodic deafness or her developing shit for brains when the story calls for it. Oh. You suicidally stupid fucking red skirt! The windscreen glass or whatever that blinded the daughter was amazing. It not only destroyed her eyes, but left her with these funky little scars that make her look like a scarification Cindy Lauper. Hello? Anybody there? Not just you, you stupid cat. Anybody there? Come out of there, kitty. Come here, kitty. One. Why does she assume the cat can understand English? Two, why does it appear that the castle freak can understand English? I have a theory about that, mistress. In the 13th century, an experiment was conducted to see what the natural, pre-Tower of Babel language of the human race was. Children were raised with outspoken language to see what they would naturally speak. This would be the original language of Adam and Eve. So? The castle freak understands English. Clearly, the experiment worked, and English is the language of God. Or it's just reacting like anyone else would to someone interrupting their sleep. By killing a cat. <laughs> Ignore me, you Say, Dan. Cat dead. Details later. There was a door that I, I opened it I, and I followed this cat downstairs and downstairs. I, Becky, how could you be so stupid? You could have been hurt. Well, I kind of, you know. Oh, no, uh, you are hurt. Oh, Becky. It's just a cat. It's, it's really no big deal. Oh, oh God. Yes. Where were you? She's Becky. hurt, John, because you let her run off. Beck, what did you do? She was right with me. Yeah, what's your excuse this time? Combs is like the Hulk. As he gets angry, his hair gets taller. Must be a dog person. I think the cat was filled with spinach. Because the castle freak suddenly develops the strength to tear his thumb off and rip the chains from the wall. Part of me is wondering where the hell all this natural light is coming from. This is the basement! <laughs> the rest of me wonders where they bought that amazing soundproofing. Oh, Jesus! Ah! I could really find a use for it. Now don't tease my balls again! Oh, Jesus! Did you hear something? No, me neither. You know, nothing trains you to be a master of stealth more than 42 years of violent imprisonment. I hear the Austrian Secret Service has already enlisted Joseph Fritzl's incest family to be secret agents. You know, I don't want to be cruel, but I am. This guy's entire human contact for decades was torture. His socialization stopped at age five. He's malnourished at best, has no idea of the layout of the building, and is dragging a large and heavy chain around. Statistically speaking, someone should have found him by accident long before he tried to sexually assault the daughter. Who's there? Who are you? I know you're there! What is it? What is it? 
is it? Who is here? He left the same door they entered, a second apart. This sort of horror farce doesn't work when the people who keep missing each other are in danger of getting jammed in a doorway together. Of course, there is the fact that the castle freak's idea of camouflage is dressing up as a ghost. So maybe they just assumed the place was haunted. Anyway, Combs does the manly man thing. I'm gonna go look around. Oh, no, Daddy, please be careful! It's okay, it's okay, It's all sweetie. right, sweetheart, I'll be right back. I know, I know, it's really weird coming from him. And decides to find the castle freak. But before you can say a sentence that's exactly as long as this one, he gets distracted by the family crypt. JJ? Yes, your dead son is totally the same as the kid who was supposed to have died four decades before his birth, but is really hiding right behind you because there's no stealth like dungeon taught stealth. The daughter is blind and Combs is semi-deaf, so I'm going to assume that Barbara Crampton's dumb every time she's not talking and or screaming. Anyway, coming this spring from HNN, The Adventures of Generic Asshole Italian Cop. He says all so the doors are locked and this is no evidence of entering by force. No one has come into the castle from the outside. But you won't know that for certain until you search the place, right? <laughs> Castello Orsino has more than 150 rooms. What about this mirror? How did you hurt your hand? Yeah. Are you saying I did it myself? Why would I break my own mirror? Maybe you don't like what you show. Oh, sweet! This is the one where he's condescending to people who put pineapple on pizza. Those asshole. Prego. Later that day, Combs brings Crampton down to the crypt so he can reveal some big news. That he believes their dead son is haunting the castle. Crampton's not putting up with his bullshit. Your conscience. conscience, John, you are just in such serious denial, you don't oh. even realize it. No, 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 no. This is different. No, it's always the same. It's never your fault. Your father was responsible for your drinking problem. The university fired you because you were politically incorrect. They... Well, yes. Telling necrophilia jokes after reanimating a student isn't bad taste. Now you're, you're not... trying to use JJ's No, ghost. I'm not! Yes, you are! It's not JJ's ghost, it's you, John, it's you! It's a bad sign when a leading character starts yelling about how transparent the film's red herring is. Why are we even pretending there's a mystery here? The film isn't. So what's left? You just punishing me? Yes, because God didn't. Drum, drum, da, dun, drama. Drum, da, dun, drama. Drum, da, dun, drama. Drum, drum, da, dun, drama. I wish I could go back. I wish it had been me. Oh, so do I. Meow. I'm so angry, I don't know where the fuck I'm going! I need staircases, yeah! Climbing stairs! <laughs> staircases! Um, guys, I think I've run up every staircase in the place. I'm starting to feel like a character in an M.C. Escher painting. Oh my god! Clouds! How do I climb them? Fear of suicidally leaping off a castle. Very subtle. Having run out of stairs, Combs understandably decides to go get smashed. And we discover that he's one of the few men who gets more attractive as they get drunker. What? Hmm? <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. I owe you a glass of wine, don't I? I know what it did it if you want it. What? I know. Uh -huh. But this nice, quiet place that's open all night. Ah. Ma che cazzo fa? Il parco di Cito! Quiet! Sound travels in this place. No, it fucking doesn't! You know, seeing Jeffrey Combs have regular sex is just weird. You'd think he'd need something extra to get it up. Like being watched by a mutant. Oh, good timing. What? What? Oh, she's a hooker. Thank fuck for that. 
I was worried that Combs had developed magical pheromones. Anyway, I think I've worked out how the castle freak is staying hidden. Freak. Freak. Remember to use your surrounding. Keep out of the family's line of sight, and keep your cardboard box handy. <laughs> I know I've told you before, but be careful. Your target is the prostitute. Sneak up and grab her. In tonight's episode, generic asshole Italian cop investigates a missing prostitute, and kind of has a point. Well, I don't know anything about this. The last time anyone saw her, she was going into the castle with you. Do you mind if I look inside? Yesterday you couldn't be bothered, and now you want to look around. Yesterday you asked us to look, now you refuse. He's not just generic Italian and an asshole. He has layers. Silvana Lucci has a small child. <laughs> so you see, a mother is missing. Am I a suspect? Has there been a crime? No. The castle freak has taken all he learned about wooing a lady from watching Jeffrey Combs. Unfortunately, he was watching Faust. That's why he chained her up and dressed like an albino Batman. Hey, the Duchess cut his cock off but left the balls! Over a hundred episodes in and finally someone understands how you do castration. You leave him wanting to come, but unable to. So, because he can't come, he does the next best thing. Bite your nipples off. Apologies to everyone in the audience who has nipples. Isn't it wonderful that sound travels in this castle? I'm sure someone will hear and be down to rescue her in no time. Any minute now. Ah, fuck it. Did you know that Pimp Lawyer had an Italian spin-off? Because it did. She's a prostitute. She must have screwed half the guys in this town. Myself included. Pimp Lawyer. Ah, uh, this guy's no David Allen Greer. Now, generic asshole Italian cop must face his worst enemy. Himself. Mamma mia! An evil clone of a me? So, he's a nice? And, uh, ungeneric? <laughs> as soon as I finish rubbing bananas on my nipples and giving them money to charity, I will destroy you, generic asshole Italian cop! Anyway, the housekeeper found the prostitute's bag, and the lawyer agrees to hush it up, if Combs doubles his fee. With blackmail? You bastard. The blackmail comes as standard. Destroying more of Combs' ever-fracturing mind is only for his favorite clients. Your father was never married to your mother. So you, Giovanni, are the bastard. Oof, beast! What I find most confusing is that Combs had to have it spelt out for him. He inherited the castle. His mother was Italian. He knew the Duchess married an American after World War II. An American who then ran off back to America with her sister. He's doing the equivalent of standing in front of a massive pile of trees and impatiently saying to the tour guide that, well, the trees are magnificent, but when are we going to see what we came here to see? A huge fucking forest! <gasps> oh hey, the movie remembers it as a soundtrack! The housekeeper goes into the dungeon where she discovers that Pamela Greer is dying before her eyes. Apologies to all the vaginas in the audience. Mom, don't you ever knock? Yeah. Oh, The police arrive to search the castle just as Combs has an amazing leap of logic and works out what's been going on. That his father's first son was chained up, tortured, and is now loose. Even though that's number 1,786 in the list of likely things that are going on. Right between the crazy Duchess faked her death, and there's a portal to another dimension in the castle. Sure, what's been going on has been obvious to us since two minutes in. But he knows fuck all. 
I can only guess that he's been having these insane theories all the time off screen. And once it turned out to be right. Giorgio Dorsino, he was never buried. She kept him alive, he's alive. Come with us, Signor Riley. What? Wait a minute, wait a minute. Typical, the one time a Combs character doesn't break any laws and he gets arrested. So they find the dead bodies of the prostitute and the housekeeper and it's classic Italian police logic. Search the castle when you have reason to, but end the search as soon as you find dead bodies. Because there's never going to be anything else you need to check. Anyway, crime scene or not, Crampton and Daughter get left in the castle with a couple of cops. And since one of them appears to be John Wayne Gacy, I'm going to suggest that they're fucked. Well, maybe not them, but any off-screen boys hanging around. The non-Wayne Gacy cop is killed. The sound mysteriously not travelling, and eventually John Wayne Gacy goes to investigate. Since the castle freak is a mental age of a five-year-old, I'm okay with this horrific death. So the castle freak knocks Crampton out. Not murdering her for some reason, and turns his affections to the daughter. Mom? <sighs> That's strange. Mom never molests me at home. The most rational explanation I can think of for this is that the cop really wanted to surprise her so he hid in the ceiling, but was tragically killed by the fall. Did you know that generic asshole Italian cop did what two types of Star Trek couldn't and made Jeffrey Combs a regular? Now, tell me again why did you kill Silvana? I didn't kill her, I fucked her, okay? Welcome to Italia, Robert England. Yeah, you tell him, stupid... Fucking American, get out of Italy, yeah, whatever. Never call me Robert England! Look on the bright side, dear. I'm only your half uncles, was well, not really incest. I'm fucking blind and I can still see that it's incest. <laughs> this is like an Elephant Man porn parody. I am not an animal! I am a human! Fucking! Or at least I would be if I had a cock and you stopped struggling. Let her go! Let her go! Take me! Wait, Barbara Crampton, the villain in Reanimator turned into a monster and wanted to fuck you. Somehow. And in From Beyond, the villain turned into a monster and wanted to fuck you. Somehow. There's a pattern here. Take your top off and use your secret weapons to distract him. Take me! Holy shit, it fucking worked! <laughs> Fuck you, window! In the master bedroom, the castle freak finds his mother's whip. And I think this is the cinematic equivalent of the Street Fighter 2 bonus stage with the car. Window! Fuck you! Fuck, fuck you, Window! Window, fuck you! He chases them upstairs. On the bright side, he's about as intelligible as Jack Nicholson at the end of The Shining. Giorgio! Jeffrey Combs? How did you get there? Ah, you forget, Hagen, that I, Jeffrey Combs, am a master of the ancient art of stair climbing. Besides, I sensed my fear of suicide would play off dramatically at the end of the film. Geronimo! <laughs> Forgive me. Hey, Mom, what's going on? 
Sorry, kid. Dad dead. Details later. After falling ratings, Generic Asshole Italian Cop was rebranded in its final episodes in an effort to stave off cancellation. It didn't work. Ciao, my friends. Stay a generic and uphold the law. Oh, my God. This is the end of an era. Oh, I just remember that episode. He sounded like he was angry, but he wasn't. And then he waved his arms around all for bad. <laughs> I need a pizza. No, not with pineapple. What's fucking wrong with you? That was Castle Freak, and it's by far the weakest of the Stuart Gordon films this month. Its attempt at a mystery was so laughable that I'm not even sure they were trying to have a mystery. Combs and Crampton were nearly wasted, and it's pretty clear what the basis for the film was. We have access to a castle. Film something! But that was the origin of most Charles Band films made in the 80s. That and Tiny Things Killing Shit is great. Out of all the Lovecraft adaptations, this is the least to do with the source material. The short is basically someone in a dungeon escapes. They see a horrible creature, before realizing it's actually a mirror. Dun dun dun! The short was about a minute of the film, around a third of the way in. The rest was extra crap added on. Now From Beyond has almost as much extra added crap, but at least it was entertaining. This is no From Beyond, and no Reanimator. But then again, almost nothing is Reanimator. Oh, Reanimator. I wish I could get beyond Reanimator, but it's just too good. So yeah, avoid unless you want to see some vintage genital damage. I'm Demon Hagen, and I have to live with that every day. Hello, my name is Diamanda Grace Jones Hagen, and I would like to talk to you today about minion starvation. This minion has not eaten in days, and is currently grasping towards the camera because I've taped a sandwich to it. Oh, no, no! <laughs> can you help? No, not really, but what you can do is check our Patreon. And help the economy of Afghanistan in doing many incredible and important things. Such as buying a more expensive sandwich to tape to the camera. So please, join us in making this minion's life a little bit harder. <laughs>